everyone. We're just going to wait a couple minutes to let more people log in and then we will get started. Okay. All right, it looks like we have most of the audience. So good morning or good evening to all of you, wherever you're joining us from. I'm Pam Kennedy, research analyst with Stimson's East Asia program. And today I'm happy to welcome you to a panel discussion on Japan-Taiwan relations in 2021. Uh, Japan has very much been changing the public discourse on Taiwan this year. We've seen statements about Taiwan's security importance from political leaders, and just last week, the ruling parties of Taiwan and Japan met for talks for the first time. Uh, this shift in bilateral relations is important to watch closely, so to help us understand what is going on and what the drivers and implications are, I'm honored to welcome two experts on Japan-Taiwan relations today. Uh, Dr. Madoka Fukuda is a professor at Hosei University in Japan, and she is currently based in Taipei as a visiting scholar at Academia Sinica. You may remember that she also contributed a policy paper on Japan-Taiwan relations for a Stimson publication this past March. Dr. Hongren Wang is an associate professor at National Chenggong University in Taiwan, and he is also the Secretary General of the Taiwan Society of Japan Studies. And we're welcoming him back today, in a sense, as he was a visiting fellow in the past for Stimson's Taiwan project. So with that, I would like to ask Dr. Wong and Dr. Fukuda to share with us their perspectives on the Taiwan-Japan developments so far. We'll then move to a Q&A session, so feel free to send us your questions in the Q&A box as we go. So I will turn to Dr. Fukuda first. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, I will share my PowerPoint. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Recently, I have more opportunities to talk with overseas experts as to whether Japan's policy toward Taiwan has changed or whether it has become more aggressive. This is because in addition to the official statement of position by the government, Japanese government officials and the Diet have often been delivering such messages since the Biden Suga Summit meeting that was held in April. Why is such a position continuing to be expressed? And do these messages really lead to a shift in Japan's policy towards Taiwan? I'd like to briefly share my thoughts on these issues. As I, as, as I have pointed out in several articles, including the one published by the Stimson Center last March, the relationship between Japan and Taiwan has continued to grow, especially since the 1990s. However, it was just an extension of the relationship that resulted from the Sino-Japanese normalization in 1972. Japan and Taiwan have become important partners in the regional economy, and both civil societies have increased common values as democratic societies. 
People's exchanges between Japan and Taiwan have increased at various levels, creating a posit positive chain of mutual support, especially in the event of natural disasters such as the earthquakes or typhoons. In contrast, political and security relations between Japan and Taiwan were weak. For a long time, the Japan ROC Diet Members Consultative Council and the Liberal Democratic Party Youth Bureau played important roles in the area of political dialogue. However, even in such exchanges, defense and security issues were barely discussed. Now, many experts are paying attention to whether this tendency will change or not. The biggest reason why Japanese discourse seems to have changed is the new US government's policy towards Taiwan. With the transition from the Trump to Biden administration, the tone of US policy towards Taiwan has not changed but the method has changed significantly. In particular, in response to China's military activities in the Taiwan Strait, the Biden administration has clearly announced its stance to deter China's military action together with regional allies and like-minded countries. And Japan is the most important partner among these countries. After the inauguration of President Biden, Japan US 2 plus 2 in March first confirmed the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Subsequently, the US Japan joint statement in mid April confirmed it again. After that, the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait was also mentioned in the joint statement of the G7 foreign ministers meeting and the summit meeting. Furthermore, even in the framework where the United States didn't participate, such as the Japan-EU summit talks and the Japan-Australia 2 plus 2, the Japanese government also confirmed that. Furthermore, it was found that public opinion in Japan highly supported Japan's involvement in the peace and stability of the Taiwan Strait. According to an opinion poll conducted by the Nikkei newspaper, immediately after the Japan-US summit meeting, 74% of the respondents supported Japan's involvement. Looking at the breakdown, it is remarkable that 80% of the, the LDP supporters and 80% of the generations in their 40s to 50s supported Japan's involvement. In response to these trends, Japanese politics have also begun to show interest in the situation in the Taiwan Strait. Prior to the Japan-US 2 plus 2 meeting, the Liberal Democratic Party's Committee of Foreign Affairs formed the Taiwan Policy Review Project Team. This team announced the first policy recommendation in June. After that, at the end of July, the trilateral strategic dialogue was held by lawmakers from Japan, the United States, and Taiwan. And in late August, the Japan-Taiwan 2 plus 2 meeting was realized by the diplomatic and defense officers of the LDP and the DPP, which are the ruling parties of both Japan and Taiwan. The momentum for defense and security dialogue based on existing lawmakers' exchanges is certainly increasing. In addition, Observers noted that the Japanese ministers made a series of statements that were different from the conventional position of the previous government. On June 28th, Yasuhide Nakayama emphasized that we must protect Taiwan and questioned the One China policy. In addition, on July 5th, Taro Aso, 
recognized that if China invaded Taiwan, it would be a situation threatening the survival of Japan. In response to these comments, Chief Cabinet Secretary Kato stated that both comments were different from the government's position. After that, he confirmed the cabinet's position, saying, it is a hypothetical question how the government would react in case of a Taiwan contingency. And I tried to refrain from giving a direct answer. Indeed, the Japanese government has not launched a new security policy for Taiwan. As an exception, the defense white paper published by the Ministry of Defense in July added an analysis of the situation in the Taiwan Strait, which was moved from the China section to the newly established US-China relationship section and mentioned the importance of the stability of the situation surrounding Taiwan for the first time. Other developments in recent Japan-Taiwan relations are the Japanese movement to increase pineapple imports from Taiwan, Japan's provision of the AstraZeneca vaccine to Taiwan, and the Japanese House of Counselors resolution to support Taiwan's attendance at the WHA. All of these, ha these have aspects of Japan's support for Taiwan, which was in trouble due to political offensives from China. However, such cooperation belongs to the area of non-traditional security or human security and should be understood as a result of the improvement of closer relations among people and society between Japan and Taiwan. In this way, the cooperation between Japan and Taiwan was more likely to develop in the area of non-traditional security than traditional security. And it is expected that this tendency will not change in the near future. However, discussions on the issue of traditional security, which have long been regarded as taboo, are beginning to take place in Japan. In such discussions, the trilateral cooperation between Japan, US, and Taiwan or the bilateral cooperation between Japan and Taiwan tends to attract people's attention. However, considering the context of the history of international relations in the region, the most realistic scenario is that defense cooperation between Japan and the US and between the US and Taiwan would be strengthened under the initiative of the United States as a hub. In addition, it is desirable to promote a security dialogue or exchanges of defense officials between Japan and Taiwan so that US-Japan and US-Taiwan cooperation can be effectively linked. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Kurita, for sharing those perspectives. Dr. Wang? Thank you. Let me share my screen here. Thank you very much. Uh, it's also my pleasure to be here today and to be uh, with the Professor uh, Fukuda to discuss today's topic regarding Taiwan-Japan relations. So I also found that actually some of my uh, PowerPoint information overlap with uh, uh, what Professor Fukuda just mentioned about. So, so it seems that we have a highly consensus regarding the recent development between uh, Japan-Taiwan relations. We all noticed that uh, Japanese leaders in uh, 2021 have made a high profile statement concerning Taiwan and the Taiwan Strait. And the Taiwan-Japan relations is closer than any time in history. But I would like to ask 
mean, uh, my audience and myself, how do these unprecedented changes happen? First of all, I would like to have uh, uh, all of you know that Japan is used to have a hedging policy toward China. Uh, this is an IR term, but let me explain to you. Hedging policy simply to say means that while Japan strengthens economic interaction with China, it hedges against the risk of China's military and the political domination in East Asia by maintaining strong security ties with the United States. In fact, a hedging policy is a policy that Japan tries to not displease two great powers, China and the United States. So as this news report, uh, you can see uh, the baby new report uh, published in uh, 2021 in this January. We see that, uh, as you can see uh, right now, the, sorry, right now Japan and, uh, uh, Japan and China, their economy ties is flourishing. And he's, here we, uh, we see that even though uh, Japan and China, they have uh, uh, these uh, political confrontations, However, Japan has never allowed such irritants to affect adversely its economic relations with uh, uh, China. Right now, we, all, we often say that China and Japan, they have these uh, cold relations in politics, but hard relations in economies. Here are some uh, effects here. China was the largest beneficiary of Japan's official development assistance programs. Uh, between 1917 and, uh, and mid-20s. And today, we see that uh, today, Japan is China's third largest source of foreign investment. Japan is China's third largest trading partner. And China is Japan's largest export market and trading partner. It repre represents more than 20% of Japan's total trade. But the next slide shows that China is pushing Japan to take on a growing military role in Indo-Pacific region. In the recent published white paper, Japan's annual defense white paper uh, shows that Japan is going to put stronger emphasis on defense and taking on a bigger role in regional security. The front and the center is China because Japan, uh, the politicians has already identified China as its primary security threat. So here we, we see that uh, the defense minister, Japan's defense minister, uh, Nobuo Kishi mentioned that actually he is accusing China of attempting to change the status quo in the regime waters. The white paper published by the Japanese government also states that the stabilizing the situation surrounding Taiwan is important for Japan's security and the stability of the international community. So actually it was Abe, the former prime minister who came up with this call for like-minded countries to protect freedom and the security in the Indo-Pacific regime. I think the important point I would like to illustrate here is that uh, Abe saying that Japan knows that it cannot contain China. So it is trying to build a network of like-minded countries to protect rural-based water. Actually, Taiwan has already included in these like-minded countries. So that's kind of uh, identity formation process that I will mention later on. So now I would like to ask, uh, how do Taiwan and Japan relations warm up? I provide three factors. Assessing, assigning social roles with each other, identity formation process and the US assistance. Those three factors are, I think, quite important in the, at least in the past 10 years to formate this, uh, I mean, to warm up this 
relation, uh, political relationship between uh, Taiwan and uh, Japan. I will just briefly introduce my ideas here. Sir. So let me show you some evidence about how these three factors work on this uh, Taiwan-Japan relationship. As you can see here from this slide, at least 10 years ago, the chemical between Taiwan and Japan already changed due to this factor. Taiwan gives most in the in world to Japan. Taiwan actually has donate, donated more money to earthquake uh, stricken Japan than any other country or region in the world, surprising the Japanese and making them realize that Taiwanese are true friends. So here we mentioned about I mean, actually the idea of friends mentioned in this report is another image building, it's another role or sign between these two countries. So next story is about uh, Japan and Taiwan uh, by this uh, news report. Here describes that officially these two countries are strangers, but unofficially they are friends. The same report showing that this friendly attitude between uh, toward Japan actually was uh, reflected in these uh, donations uh, from Taiwan uh, uh, due to the earthquake. And uh, actually another decision is that uh, actually the, the, the local people in Japan, uh, Professor Fukuta just mentioned about uh, actually uh, some people in during that period of time, they were outraged when the Democratic Party of Japan DBJ government opted for strict adherence to its one China policy and rule out any Taiwanese presence at public events promoting disaster recoveries. So actually, uh, uh, DPT was outed after the elections and uh, maybe fortunately, uh, the Liberal Democratic Party the returned to power. So, and most of not worse, it was the response from the ordinary Japanese assistance. So the following report actually just mentioned about how Japanese assistance supported the Liberal Democratic parties in terms of politically and diplomatically to support Taiwan. So there are some points mentioned in this report. Uh, I, I try to illustrate about the importance of these uh, role making uh, factors. Uh, let me mention that uh, several factors contribute to this warm up relationship between uh, Japan and Taiwan. The first thing is uh, that Taiwan since the 1990s, uh, actually the government in Taiwan has become more democratic and its economy has grown. Uh, second, actually after uh, 2013, the two countries have begun to explore a new bilateral relationship in which the government actions are promoted by the public. And finally, the private sectors and the ordinary citizens, they are playing some kind of a crucial role in pushing two countries' uh, relationship to be improved. Here's another uh, news report I collect uh, for you. Actually, this is the, uh, the report about uh, Japan representative to Taiwan say something about in the ceremony of this uh, uh, new name of uh, Japan Taiwan uh, Exchange Association. Uh, this representative says that uh, in 2017, the two countries relationship are actually at their best. And during this period of time, so this ceremony was to officially change the name of Japan's office on the Taiwan, actually it's a de facto embassy to the, to the Japan Taiwan Exchange Association. Previously, it was named Interchange Association Japan without the name of Taiwan. So that's actually kind of a, a big forward step. And this is the memorial trophy given by uh, Taiwan's former affairs minister, Joseph Wu. Joseph Wu gave this uh, uh, memorial to, Memorial Trophy to Japan representative uh, Mikio Munata. Let me read this Chinese for you. Actually, it's saying that, thank you, representative uh, Mikio Munata, my dearest, 
big brother, your perfect service in Taiwan. The point here I want to mention is that this name of big service, this calling of big, this calling of a big brother actually uh, kind of uh, uh, relate the relationship between Taiwan and Japan in a kind of imaginary uh, resemblance. They have uh, some commodities uh, in this kind of image of the family relationship. So that's what kind of uh, uh, I call uh, role making and the identity formation process. Uh, former Prime Minister Abe showed his intention in 2020 to say that he would like to visit Taiwan in 2021. And here we see uh, US assistance and US influence uh, uh, bring into this uh, uh, Japan and the US joint statement. Uh, Professor uh, Fukuda also mentioned about in his uh, uh, presentation. And uh, in this, actually, in this joint uh, statement, uh, they are trying to figure out how for Japan, how far Japan might be willing to go to help defend the island, actually Taiwan, against an attack from China. Another showing of goodness from both Japan and the United States recently. One is a Japanese donation of vaccines actually just arrived in 2021. Actually, that was an emergency of the pandemic situation in Taiwan. And the US sent Taiwan 2.5 million vaccines doses. That's it tripling its uh, original prime, uh, promises. Recently, we have this uh, uh, first time trilateral dialogue between Taiwan, Japan, and the United States uh, between the three countries lawmakers in uh, 2021 in July. So that's the first edition of the trilateral strategic dialogue between the three countries. As one US participant mentioned that cooperation among Taiwan, Japan, and the United States will enhance global economic prosperity while countering pre, uh, predatory actions by the Chinese Communist parties. During this first time edition of uh, trilateral dialogue, we have a very special guest from Japan. It was, it was a former Prime Minister Abe, a very special guest showing up in this uh, trilateral dialogue. So sometimes Taiwanese media see this as a very uh, big step forward between the relationship uh, Taiwan and uh, Japan. Just happened last week, Japan, Taiwan, actually the ruling Two ruling parties, they have these uh, visual meetings uh, online. So Japan, Taiwan lawmakers, they discuss this uh, China threat. I'm going to end uh, up my presentation, but before that, uh, I think uh, from my presentation, I also think about some extended questions. So maybe we can think about uh, uh, to, uh, maybe my audience, we can also think about uh, together. Uh, because I, I found it interesting that uh, uh, since the Japanese leaders in uh, 2021 have made high profile statements concerning Taiwan and the, the Taiwan Strait, uh, do recent developments indicate a major change in Japan's official postures? That's kind of one big question. So very, uh, I mean, many people in Taiwan, they are quite interested in. And the second question is that, why does Japan show its support for Taiwan at the risk of uh, sacrificing Japan-China relationship. Finally, uh, I would like to probably also ask myself why it is Prime Minister uh, Yoshida Suga instead of Prime Minister Abe in the Trump er area. Sorry, that's a typo. That raises issues of uh, Taiwan defense against the China. Uh, that's all my today. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang. Um, to get our Q&A started, um, I will take my moderator's prerogative to 
ask the first couple questions. Um, you've already brought up some of these issues in your discussions. And I think one of the biggest questions is why are political leaders in Japan so willing to speak openly about Taiwan now? And you have addressed that, but is this new dynamic likely to continue? And it, how is it going to affect Japan's relations with China, but also Taiwan's? Um, Dr. Fukuda, would you like to address that first? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, uh, okay. In my understanding, uh, Japanese leaders uh, perceive that Chinese military activities in the East and the Ch South China Sea have become new normal and could es escalate further in the near future. I think Japanese political leaders uh, speaking uh, reflect such a perception. So if this condition doesn't change, the speaking out uh, such kinds of speaking out should continue. And as I mentioned in my presentation, the US expectation to state the commitment towards the peace and stability in, in the Taiwan Strait together with Japan and support from Japanese public opinions also encourage Japanese leaders to do so. In this context, if the United States policy towards China and Taiwan change, the speaking out should also change. And furthermore, it's just my impression, but Japanese leaders may be impatient about not being prepared for a Taiwan contingency at all, at this time, at this moment. If so, when they can feel confident about US-Japan cooperation on the Taiwan issue, uh, the speaking out may be diminished. That's my view. Thank you. That makes sense. Um, there, is, um, there are a lot of good reasons why Japanese political leaders see that now is an opportune time um, to address the Taiwan issue. Dr. Wong, um, what do you think? Is this trajectory we've seen between Taiwan and Japan going to continue for the foreseeable future or are there other factors we should consider? Yeah, thank you. I think it is very likely to continue even after we need to think about actually uh, Japan is going to have a new election in October. But from my perspective, I think it is likely to continue the current uh, relationship after the election in October. Certainly from uh, Taiwan's perspective, uh, I, I myself, uh, we actually would like this new dynamic uh, to continue in a positive way in the future. And uh, from, Japan's, from the Japan's view, I guess, I believe that the government will follow, the Japanese government will follow the US foot and work with uh, uh, Taiwanese government, uh, political parties, or even societies, uh, include, including uh, enterprises uh, on their concerned issues. Uh, probably GCTF, uh, this global cooperation and the training uh, framework project uh, uh, initiated by both Taiwan and the United States uh, will be a good framework for, or will be an ideal place for Japan to participate. So we can have this uh, trilateral cooperation between the uh, three countries. Uh, in terms of how the dynamic changes of uh, Taiwan-Japan relationship will impact uh, with their relationship with uh, China or Beijing, uh, I believe that Beijing right now is just watching how Japan or Taiwan is violating this uh, uh, one China principle, but Beijing will find a good time of opportunity, I believe, to punish uh, the both countries, unfortunately. For example, uh, I think uh, China can use its new coast guide law to intimidate uh, Japanese vessels and even fire a weapon against them when China thinks it is necessary. Besides, 
the Japan controlled China claimed Senkaku Island will be China's target in the future again. I think China can raise the sovereignty issue again by harassing the uh, Senkaku Island. Uh, when I say harassing, it's kind of like uh, how uh, China is treating Taiwan right now because they have uh, this uh, uh, air jets uh, in our uh, southwest areas, uh, uh, probably almost uh, every day, every week. So right now we have this uh, threat from uh, Taiwan's uh, southwest coast from China. Uh, so it's kind of harassing. It's not actually going to attack you, but it's kind of harass you. Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to ask, um, because of the breadth of Japan-Taiwan relations, um, the, there's been a lot of attention recently on the defense and security aspects of the relationship and how they um, are thin and being strengthened, perhaps. But in your perspectives, what is the most valuable area for Japan and Taiwan to increase their cooperation at the moment? I'll start with Dr. Wang, actually, and we'll okay. go to Dr. Fukuda. Okay. Uh, I think there are three areas, probably Taiwan and Japan, they can have, uh, or they can continue substantive uh, cooperation. Uh, the first point is uh, probably they can, uh, to encourage both sides to have this particular type of party to party dialogue, like what they did last Friday, the, ruling, the two ruling parties actually, they have these uh, uh, virtual meetings online. Uh, but I, I, I think it should not be limited to the ruling party. The dialogue can be applied to, the, for example, the rising party, such as uh, uh, Taiwan People's Party led by the current uh, Taipei mayor, current. Uh, the point here I would like to emphasize is that uh, different types of uh, group in both countries can start to have uh, more interactions in order to build up their consensus on certain regional issues. Second point or second area, I think both countries can work together is uh, uh, this uh, trilateral or quad format meeting would be another important area for both countries to work together. Right now, the American government is playing a crucial role in relating Taiwan with other Indo-Pacific countries such as Japan, India, and Australia. I think it's already have a good model there. So, uh, so far they already have this foundation and I believe uh, Taiwan and Japan, they can, or they will increase uh, their substantial cooperation in those different venues. Finally, uh, in addition to those areas such as the national defense and the foreign affairs, that Taiwan and Japan can or should work together, I think be more specific. Uh, both countries can have more conversations on regional security issues, especially on non-traditional security issues, such as the spread of virus, swine fever, pandemic prevention, research on vaccine, climate change, sea quake, clean energy, and so on. So that's a uh, three point uh, uh, I would like to raise. Thank you. Dr. Fukuda, what is your view? Hey, thank you for your question. I think that the development of economic relations and people's exchanges is the most important area in Japan-Taiwan relations. This is because historically, Japan and Taiwan are neighbors with close economic exchanges and have developed in the interdependent relations together. And today, economic relations are also heavily involved in security issues. I believe it is important for Japan and Taiwan to communicate closely and work together to ensure that Taiwan is not is isolated in the development of regional economic cooperation, especially in the near future whether Taiwan will be able to participate in the CPTPP will be a critical issue for Japan-Taiwan relations. I also think that Japan and Taiwan should communicate well and cooperate with each other in these areas, as well as in promoting dialogue in the area of defense and security. 
uh, so as not to overstimulate China. Specifically, I think it is desirable to quietly build the necessary, necessary cooperation rather than having the promotion of strength and bilateral cooperation. That's my opinion. Thank you, Dr. Fukuda. Uh, we actually have a question for you from the audience that I will start with to break into the audience Q&A. Um, Randy Lieberman asks you to clarify the rationale for why Prime Minister Suga walked back the initial comments um, on Taiwan, like in the joint statement. Um, and do you also, as a secondary question, do you think that Japan will be able to join the Five Eyes Network? Uh, thank you for two very important question. For the first question, uh, 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 <laughs> the uh, Prime Minister Suga and the cabinet uh, uh, denied uh, the two uh, comments from uh, minister uh, from two ministers because uh, if the cabinet and the prime minister uh, approve uh, that uh, it is to uh, it will be uh, it will be uh, uh, it will be uh, how can I say it? It will deny uh, the history of between Japan and China since 1972, and uh, it will be a, a really a big change of the Japanese position in the international relations and uh, regional politics um, since 1970s. So, uh, so uh, they can't, uh, they can't easily approve such uh, comments from two ministers. Uh, that's my view. And uh, and about uh, the Taiwan co Taiwan co co contingency, um, the government position is uh, they can't say. Uh, nothing about that. Uh, they, they can't clarify uh, the uh, foreseeable situation and the uh, uh, plans uh, at this moment. So, uh, so uh, the cabinet uh, have to deny the comments from Minister, uh, Minister Aso. And the second, about second question about uh, five eyes, I think uh, Japanese position is now uh, really closer to the uh, countries of five, five eyes, but uh, there are still some uh, different, especially uh, in the issue of human rights and the uh, uh, position about the issue of Hong Kong. So uh, how can I say, uh, at this time, it is not um, so clear that uh, uh, Japan will join in the five eyes or not. That's my, my view, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Fukuda. Dr. Wong, I have a question mm -hmm. um, that I think would be best answered by you. This is from Jada Frazier. How has the US and Japanese support for Taiwan recently impacted Taiwan's um, ability to play a role in international organizations? Do you see the outpouring of support making a substantial impact in Taiwan's real capacity in that area? Yes, I think it has a substantial impact on Taiwan, especially uh, it gave uh, the current, I mean, of course, we need support from all over the world, not only two countries, but we have to admit that uh, 
the United States and uh, Japan, uh, they are our long allies as well as the friends. Uh, so their support actually matters a lot, especially in terms of uh, their uh, influence in the world politics. Uh, Japan is the regional greater power and the United States is the uh, superpower in the world. Uh, we, we have to admit that. Uh, but I think in the past, uh, both countries, they have this uh, ambiguous policy toward both Taiwan and China. But I think something changes uh, since at least the, uh, the Trump administration even though the Trump administration did not uh, actually uh, change this one China policy, but kind of uh, uh, make some uh, substantial influence. For example, the Biden administration kind of uh, so far need to follow uh, the Trump's some uh, foreign policy idea uh, to continue this uh, uh, Trumpism. Uh, so I think most of people in Taiwan, they will agree that uh, right now, both United States and Japan, they have already uh, changed their policy from ambiguous policy to uh, clarity, actually. Uh, so that gives China a very clear message that, uh, you know, you can just play the game between uh, Taiwan and the United States or Japan. Uh, right now, uh, Taiwan's friend, uh, United States and Japan, they make a clear message. It's also a kind of a, a you can have a, this uh, uh, deterrence effect. Actually, I, I know that uh, Taiwan, United States or Japan, neither country, they would like to wage a war with uh, China. But uh, we show our intention together, work together to kind of uh, to prevent uh, any uh, situation become worse. So uh, to answer your questions, I think uh, both countries' support are quite important to encourage Taiwan, encourage Taiwanese people, or give us uh, uh, some kind of uh, confidence uh, to continue our uh, current uh, status quo policy or harmonious policy uh, in the regional participation. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to next turn to the domestic political factors. We have a couple of really interesting questions. Um, I'll combine them. Um, Michael Fonti asks how we should assess the, the split in the LDP in Japan between those who are focused on the economic relations with China and those more focused on the security issues, um, uh, in particular, I guess, the the um, lawmakers who support closer relations with Taiwan. and. Uh, in on the Taiwan side, DPP obviously, um, Brian Bridges notes that DPP is very favorable to developing stronger links with Japan, but what about the KMT? So how much of this current status, this current situation between Japan and Taiwan is because the DPP is in charge and could that change? Um, let's see, I think, I will start with Dr. Fukuda, and you can address either the Japan or the Taiwan related question. I think I'd be interested to hear both of your perspectives. Okay, thank you for a really interesting question and uh, uh, explaining the LDP's split. Uh, for me, it is a little bit difficult, but I think uh, now, I, I guess now in the LDP, part, LDP party, there are many debates about the policy towards China and Taiwan. And uh, uh, the, the most important question is uh, the which the LDP choose uh, between uh, the economic relation with China or uh, security, uh, defense and security, uh, strengthening defense and security, uh, including the cooperation with Taiwan. Uh, and, uh, but the, um, uh, at this moment, I have no idea about uh, how uh, the 
uh, uh, the uh, such a debate um, uh, related with the uh, struggle in the part in the LDP party and so on. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, the different about the about the Taiwanese side, uh, I also think uh, there is the uh, different between DPP and KMT in the uh, in the their policies uh, toward Japan, but the main issue is not the economic relationship and the defense and security, uh, but uh, the issue of the historical issue and territorial issue. So uh, to promote the economic or uh, defense and security relationship, uh, I think um, there is, uh, there are not uh, such a, a great differences between KMT and DPP, but maybe uh, Professor Wang have a different, I, has a different idea. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my own view, thank you. Professor Wong, what are your thoughts? Thank you. I think uh, for sure, both parties, I mean, DPP and uh, KMT in Taiwan, uh, as long as uh, they are in charge of power, they, of course, they would like to have a very strong uh, link, strong relationship with uh, Japan. There's no doubt. Uh, so that's kind of uh, the intention of the whole society in Taiwan. I don't think... Uh, KMT would say that, okay, we don't need support from Japan. That's impossible. But right now, because the KMT party, they are the opposition party, they kind of so picky about uh, the ruling parties, everything, every policy uh, toward Japan. For example, previously, they criticized of uh, ruling party DPP regarding uh, the discussion of uh, importing those uh, the so-called nuclear food, the, sorry, the nuclear food from Japan. Uh, even if uh, uh, the Japanese government uh, claim that uh, everything already uh, exempt without any uh, uh, security issues, uh, but uh, as a strategy, I think the the KMT they always you know try to criticize the uh, current ruling party, and uh, uh, I think our. Uh, audience is quite right uh, saying about Main Jiu, our previous uh, president. Uh, he's kind of uh, just one, uh, just one of many KMT supporters who have this uh, negative attitude toward Japan due to their uh, historical memory, even though those historical memory uh, taught by the textbook, not just uh, they, uh, uh, they experience those uh, tragedy in person. Uh, so they have this, uh, I mean, they, ha they have been constrained by this uh, historical memory. That's one issue. And the second important issue is that uh, they, they still have this uh, uh, Republic of China, Taiwan's formal official name, Republic of China. They still have this uh, Republic of China syndrome, I would say that. So they so care about uh, whether, I mean, they talk about the Senkaku Island issue. So that these uh, disputed islands right now, of course, we have a different view, legal views on, uh, you know, the, the this thing about the Senkaku Island. Uh, but they, uh, I mean, many people like mind you because they kind of go aside with uh, the mainland Chinese. So they will uh, care about uh, this uh, sovereignty issue over St. Caroline Island, uh, which actually contribute their negative attitude towards Japan. But uh, the current ruling party, DPP, they don't have this uh, uh, burden, maybe uh, the burden of history. So they will have uh, more open uh, policy toward Japan, 
even regard this uh, Senkaku uh, IND issues because we, I mean, we can we can have a dialogue, uh, we can have open dialogue to discuss this uh, disputed island, uh, but uh, this disputed island, uh, according to my understanding, uh, from the perspective of Taipei, the ruling party should not prevent uh, our prevent both sides to improve, uh, I mean, their relationship in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And since we have just five minutes left, this may be our last question. I'm going to try and cram three questions in together. Um, we have several questions relating to a, um, a contingency in the Taiwan Strait. So what is the role of Japan's, uh, wh what role should would Japan play perhaps in a Taiwan contingency? Has there been any discussion? Um, Dave Brown asks about amending the US-Japan defense guidelines to consider what sort of cooperation Japan would provide. And finally, Ezekiel Tan asks a really good question. How has the US's recent missteps in Afghanistan and um, the inability to influence the situation in Myanmar. Uh, how has that changed or affected the security calculus of Japan and Taiwan vis-a-vis -vis China? Um, I think I will start, I'll have to start with Dr. Fukuda, if you have any thoughts on um, Japanese cooperation in a Taiwan-related contingency or a contingency in East China Sea. Okay, as I presented, uh, the main role of Japan is at first their own defense, strengthen their own defense. And then uh, in the uh, context of the uh, alliance with the United States, they have to clarify uh, their role uh, in the case of Taiwan contingency. And uh, about the guideline, it is a really difficult question. And uh, I, I really don't know. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, many, scholar, many experts in Japan also uh, don't know uh, whether, uh, whether there is uh, such a guideline or not, and uh, if there is a guideline, uh, what kind of uh, contents <laughs> it includes? Uh, um, but uh, from, in my view, uh, watching uh, uh, domestic uh, debate uh, in Japan today, uh, maybe uh, they, they have to make such a discussion and uh, build such kinds of guideline and uh, uh, search for, uh, for necessary cooperation with the United States from now. That's my View, only my my view and my impressions and uh, about Afghanistan and Myanmar uh, uh, situation of the Afghanistan and Myanmar is uh, uh, from from the view of Japan it's uh, affects uh, the credibility of the uh, alliance with the United States very much but the Biden administration repeatedly uh, assured that uh, uh, they will uh, commit uh, to us uh, the uh, allies in the Asia Pacific area and uh, they are different from Afghanistan. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, in the case of Japan, it is not so, um, it will uh, affect uh, not so much uh, towards uh, the, uh, the credibility of the alliance between Japan and the United States. Thank you. 
That's a very good point on the guidelines. That is such a delicate and quiet discussion that's happening, I'm sure. Um, Dr. Wang, what are your thoughts? Thank you. Let me just answer this uh, Afghanistan uh, questions. Uh, I think, I don't think, uh, my answer is quite simple. I don't think uh, the Afghan Afghanistan case uh, has changed or affect the security calculus of uh, Japan or Taiwan, even of the United States, uh, because we already actually have uh, this uh, consensus in Taiwan that Afghanistan is very different from Taiwan. I mean, there are two different cases, uh, especially when we are facing uh, this uh, rising China, uh, China's rising power. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, Japan, Taiwan, and also United States, so we will continue our uh, uh, commission. Of, I mean, we will continue our cooperation, uh, especially when we are facing not Afghanistan, we are facing China. Uh, it is probably right now the third or the uh, second largest military uh, country in the world in terms of their investment in the uh, military modernization. It already passed uh, Japan, I guess. So uh, I believe that uh, in terms of this uh, strategic need, uh, the United States and Japan, I mean, they will continue to work together to help Taiwan, uh, you know, to prevent this uh, potential threat from China. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are, we are at 9.01 a.m. here and it's 9.01 p.m. in Taipei for our speakers, so it's getting late. With that, thank you so much, Dr. Wong, Dr. Fukuda, for joining us today and sharing your insights on the trajectory and the really the breadth of issues um, in Japan-Taiwan relations. I'm sure over the next few months, we're going to continue to see some really interesting and important developments to follow. Um, and for our audience, Thank you very much for tuning in, for sending in your questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to every question. There were so many. So thank you for joining us today. Um, and this will conclude the webinar. Thank you very thank much. You,